What's up everybody, Chris Jacobs here for Optima Batteries High Performance House Calls and today we're hitting the drag strip. Let's head out to New Jersey and check in on Anthony and Michelle Bongiovanni of Bongiovanni Drag Racing. Hey Chris. Hey Hello. Anthony, how you doing? Uh, we're pretty good, pretty good, doing well. Good to see you. I, it looks like you're in your shop there. I am, I'm in my shop. I'm here with my daughter Michelle. Hi. Hey Hi. Michelle. How are you? Good, how are you? Excellent, nice to see you too. We got the whole Bon Giovanni uh, family here. I like it. <laughs> most of them, most of them, we're, mi we're missing one, but uh, she uh, had some other things to do. Well, the racing, the racing part of the family. <laughs> we, have the, we definitely have the whole racing part of the family right now. Well, Anthony, tell me a little bit about your race team. You guys are drag racers, right? We are. We actually, uh, the kids actually started racing it. We got it, into it probably very differently than the way most people do. Most, uh, most kids get into it when their dads are drag racers and they grow up and they want to get their kids into it. And in my case, my kids got me into the drag racing. <laughs> so it was kind of the uh, other way around. So talk to me about how you got your start and um, when you first started racing, what were your first couple races and, and what were your results like? Michelle and I actually went down to watch a friend of mine race, somebody that I knew in business that, that I've been close with ever since. And I had never been to a drag race before, but I've been a, you know, a, a car guy forever. I just absolutely love cars. And we went down to watch, watch him race. And Michelle was with me at the time. She was eight and just had a ball. We went to Raceway Park, which is a very famous you know, dragway in, in New sure. Jersey. Unfortunately, they, they closed it down now, but uh, we got to watch ra the race. We were there during a national event, so it was very exciting. Michelle loved it. We talked to Ray afterwards, my friend Ray Scardelli, and he, uh, he introduced us to junior drag racing. So he told us his kids race. We're like, well, what do they race? So he told us what they raced, and Michelle looks at me, and she goes, boy, I'd love to try that. <laughs> so being a car nut, you know, the next thing you know, I'm building two junior dragsters and we're getting started. Michelle, how old were you when you, uh, when you piloted your first race? I think I was about like eight and a half. Wow. Almost yeah. yeah. It was a very quick jump from when I said I wanted to do it to then when we actually started. <laughs> and how old were you when you recorded your first win? Uh, my first first round win was, I think, my, like the beginning of my second season or the end of my first season. I barely remember it because I was eight. Um, but we were both, me and my dad were both just so excited. I had no idea what I was doing. I was running a 1290 car, which is like 50 miles an hour in the eighth mile. Um, but we were so excited. And I honestly don't remember uh, my first final round win, but. It was, it, it was when you were nine, because it was actually your first full year. But I'll tell you what, her first round win, she might as well have won the Daytona 500. It was about that as exciting for me, you know. You know, there's not a lot of nine-year-olds that can say that they've uh, got a drag racing win under their belt. So that's, that's pretty cool, Michelle. Very, very well done. Thanks. <laughs> All right, well, let's get to it. Why don't you guys show me around the shop? What do you got going over there? I'll start with the junior dragsters. Um, these were the first, these were the two juniors that I built for uh, Michelle and for Jenna. So on the left is a little devil. That's what she wanted to name it when she was eight years old. Of course, when she got older, she wanted a little different paint scheme. So I had to get her a different junior. But uh, and then this was uh, this was my other daughter, Jenna's junior dragster, high maintenance. And, uh, you know, I could actually never bring myself to sell on these juniors because, they were, you know, we had we created such great memories with the junior dragster sure. program. It was wonderful. My very first race car that I built, I sold to a good friend of mine that still races with us, but the, the next race car I built, which happens to be Michelle's car, is this 2008 uh, Superstock. This runs Superstock class. So this car makes about 950 to 1,000 horsepower. Uh, it'll go zero to about 150 in eight and a half seconds. Um, I actually started her in super stock instead of stock because it's a big tire and it's got a trans brake and, and it's got an air shifter in it. So it made it more similar to the juniors, whereas in stock eliminator cars, you actually have to shift it. You have to run a small tire so it's not as planted to the ground and you can't run a trans brake. I built this car for my daughter, Jenna, and uh, got it all finished, brought it to a local racetrack by my house, ran it down the track. I was in it, fortunately crossed the finish line and the car burst into flames. Oh, wow. Apparently there was a, a fuel sample valve that was defective. It pushed the O-ring out while I was going down the track and spraying fuel all over the motor. And as I crossed the finish line, it actually, the header touched off 
uh, touched off the fuel and the car started on fire. But the sad part about it was the track's fire equipment wasn't working. Oh, man. So it literally burned down to the ground and I had to rebuild it all over again. But the other, the next car I built, I'll actually show you in a minute in the dyno room, but this car right here while we're standing next to it, this is a, a 2016 Cobra Jet. Uh, we built this for uh, the factory stock showdown with NHRA. We've also run it in the supercar series with, with the NMCA. Um, we were competitive in the beginning, but I'll tell you what, that is a tough class to run. We actually just built a new motor for it, and uh, we're looking forward to be competitive when we get it back out on the track. But this is a, an absolutely phenomenal class. And it's what are you running in that car? So this car is actually running a 5-liter motor, um, 2.9 liter uh, supercharger this one's making about 1400 horsepower <laughs> wow and and this will run i mean right now the, the competitive cars in this class are running almost 180 uh, miles an hour in uh, under eight seconds they're running wow. 70s yeah they're they're incredibly fast this is my uh, my super stock car that i run i used to run michelle's car and then i built this super stock car this is a uh, 2014 Cobra Jet, um, and I've had a lot of success with this. I won the national event in Epping a few years back. That was actually the first national event I ever won, so that was thrilling for me. And as well, my daughter, Michelle, she was with me. But this car's a lot of fun. This car runs uh, about 830s at 165 miles an hour on a good day. We've got everything tuned up the way we need it to And go. you've got the 5.0 in that one as well? That's a five liter motor as well. And the same supercharger? Uh, the supercharger in this car is a 2.9. It's, oh, it's even larger, wow. We actually have a 2010 GT500. Uh, this car is a ton of fun to drive. It's actually a street car. It makes 1,000 horsepower, which is absolutely insane. And I have to say the car is evil. I have a lot of respect for it on the street, and I don't let anybody drive it, including Michelle, and she's pretty good at driving stuff. But uh, it, it, it goes. I haven't put it on the track yet. I don't know that I will, but it certainly has been an awfully fun street car. Yeah, that is definitely a fun street car. So I got to ask you, Anthony, why Mustangs? You know, I just always loved the Ford brand, and I always loved the Mustang. The very first car, the very first new car I ever had was a Ford Mustang back in 1979. And I've just always liked them. I've just always been a Ford guy. So I've kind of stuck with it. And when I, decided to start racing with the girls. It was like, what do we want to build? And Mustang was interesting to everybody, and that was the way we went. Well, it's definitely a classic. I wore this shirt, especially for you. Uh, tried to get into the Mustang flavor of things. Even though I'm a Mopar guy, I, I love Mustangs too. I actually used to own a 64 and a half Mustang a long, long, long time ago. That was actually my first cool car that I owned was a 64 and a half convertible. That's nice. That's a beautiful car. That is a beautiful car. Didn't have a lot of get up and go like those do. It just had the little 260 under the hood, but it sure was fun to cruise in. Without a doubt. Yep. It was a great car back then. This, is, uh, this car is a 1988 Fox Body Mustang. This was actually the SEMA show car to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Muscle Mustang and Fast Forward magazine. They actually never quite finished it for SEMA. They pushed it into the show, but they never quite got it running. And I ended up buying the car. And we actually finished it. We did get it running. There's a few other things that we're doing to it, but it's going to be on the street very soon. But this is a super cool car. It has a Kazi engine, it, engine in it, which is really sharp. I love the Fox bodies because it reminds me of high school. Those were my high school years. And, uh, you know, when that 5.0 5 first came out with the louvered taillights, I mean, that was it. If you had one of those, you were definitely cool. When I had my, my 79, I remember when those cars came out and I was like so envious. It was like, I want one of those, you know. You got some really rare ponies in your collection. That's great. Two, two of only 50 and, and one of 100. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, we have, uh, we have quite a few sitting here. It's, uh, I didn't have a Mustang at the time I started drag racing, and now I've got a whole bunch. <laughs> you definitely do, and a, and a good bunch also. That is so cool. They all have a little story behind them. Of course. All right, now come on, Anthony, stop teasing me. Let's get to that dyno. Right here is our, our dyno setup. So on the left, on the two monitors there, we have our, our dyno gear, right, our computer to manage everything. Ricky, go ahead and get set up with that, if you would. All right, go ahead and fire it up, Rick. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll be able to hear it. Yeah. So Ricky's got that fired up. He's going to get the car rolling. 
I'll give him the high sign, and then he will go and do a pull. Yeah, and you let us know what the numbers are. And that particular hit, we made about 829 horsepower. So we're actually just getting that tuned up. Just getting warmed up. By the time we get finished with it, it'll be probably pretty close to 900 horsepower. Oh, so good. There's no sound quite like that, is there, Anthony? No, I, I, I don't know that I, that I could ever race electric cars. It's just not the same thing. There's a, there is just, something about that just, noise that's wonderful. You need that noise and you need that vibration and that rumble. I mean, it's just, it's drag racing, as you know very well. You know, drag racing is a very, very difficult uh, environment for anything in, a, in a, a car, right? Just the amount of vibration that you have. Um, it's really tough. And with drag racing too, a lot of the cars we don't run alternators in. So the batteries can be the difference between, you know, getting that car fired up and getting down the track and not. And we found optimum batteries to be excellent. You know, we could rely on them every day, right? In every race. And it's, it gets a little nerve wracking when you're going rounds and you're doing, you know, three rounds within, you know, 15 minutes when they're doing a round robin and you just need to make sure you've got enough power to get down the track. So that's why we run Optima. Yeah. And you know what? That's a great distinction to make. There are no alternators in those cars. So you're only drawing power from your battery and it's got to be rock solid. And that's where Optima comes in with that support every time. Their, their technology is amazing. We've been, we've been with Optima for a long time now and it, those batteries have never let us down. Anthony Bongiovanni, Bongiovanni Racing, how can people find you? What are your social media channels? We, uh, we, have, we do have an Instagram page and also on Facebook, we have a Bongiovanni Racing website and pretty much everything that we're doing, you can see right there. Amazing, man. I know everybody's going to check that out. I will definitely be keeping tabs on you. Looking forward to you and Michelle getting back out on the drag strip as soon as possible. Anthony, thank you so much for the shop tour, man. Chris, thank you so much. Good to see you. Good to thank see you. you, Anthony, Michelle. You guys take it easy. Have a great one. You too. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> right. Goodbye. See you later. Bye.